So for those of you who are not aware, let me remind you that the comprehensive test is next week, Friday. So just take note, the comprehensive test. is on Friday, the 11th of December. The time, I believe, is from 5.30 to... Madam, good evening. Good evening. Ma'am, I've been trying to text you. Um, I, I, I privated you, but you didn't reply. So I was supposed to continuously keep trying to call you, but she didn't reply either, because I asked like a question pertaining to the test. Like some of us are what not in the country. Pardon? What is your question? I don't think I got that message. Was it on Teams? Hello, are you still there? Um, hello, my network yeah. is, was giving me problems. Okay, was it on Teams that you sent the message? No, actually I text on WhatsApp. I, did, I didn't know where to get hold of you because I can't call you directly due to the fact that I'm not in the country and it's pricey. So like I was asking, um, yeah. I was asking like what's, what's the provision for us who are not in the country? Like how are we going to write the test? Uh, if you are unable to write the test now, that is this Friday, the option left is for you to write the supplementary test which is in february so hopefully by that time you will be back and able to write it here oh uh, yeah uh, okay but then there's not like there's no other provision for like the for the people to understand because i think we're quite a number who are not are you as far as i know i know somebody else also asked me about that he told me he's out of the country yeah. uh he mentioned uh something like they because i think he's doing distance so they wanted him to write at the embassy but i don't know if that is something that can be done so it's not something i can promise to do and now it's oh, okay. I will tell Mr. Mwahi about this. Uh, if you know others, maybe you can tell them to email me your details so that when I go uh, to him, I have a list of all the students. Then maybe we can see what to do. But at this stage, I don't see if we will be able to arrange something for you to write in another country and we have somebody supervising you. But at least if I have your details, then we will see what to do. So please email me all your details where you are, and then I will let him know, and then we'll see what to do. And for the rest of you, we said um, it's Friday from 5.30 p.m. to 7. Let me just check that I have this time correct. Okay, yeah, to 7 p.m. Uh, this is in the basement. So please be on time, come with your mask, uh, be early so that all the sanitizing and everything that we are doing, uh, we will be able to be done and you can start on time. Okay, uh, there is provision for those who are not in Vintuk to write at the centers. So as far as I'm aware, the paper will be sent to all the NAST centers and you can write from those centers. Okay, so if you are not in Vintuk, you don't necessarily have to travel and write it in Vintuk. If there's a center near you, you should be able to write at one of those centers. Okay. Right, now let's get into what we're supposed to do today, unless there are any other questions. Okay, so today we talk about um, 
index numbers. Now these are just a statistical tool that we use to um, see how variables are changing over time. Okay, so I have a few preliminary things that we should take note of and then um, we have some questions where we will actually be doing some calculations. So you saw one such question in your assignment two where you had to calculate the Lapierre um, index number. So those are the type of questions that you will be asked to calculate this index number, calculate that index number, and that's it. Hello, I'm sorry. Good evening, ma'am. Sorry to disturb you once more. My network is really acting up here. That's why okay. I lost you. Okay. But you, were saying, but you were saying something about, like, if I know more people, um, what? Uh, just have them send me their details so that I have a list of those people who are out of the country. Then I will forward it to Mr. Mwahi. All right, ma'am. Thank you. I will most definitely do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we say that an index number is a statistical designed to show changes in variable in a variable So it measures the percentage change from a base period. Here, what we are saying is we have a reference point, which is our base period. This base period may be a day, it may be a year, it may be a month. So you want to compare how has the variable changed from day one to day two? How is the variable changed from month one to month two? Or how is the variable changed from year one to year two? And so on. So there are several um, index numbers that we use. I'm sure you're familiar with some of them, like the consumer price index. I think most of you are doing business or human resources, economics or something in that field. So these are things that you've heard of before. Now we classify our uh, index numbers into four groups. So these are the classifications. of index numbers. Okay, the first is the price index numbers. So these are like your consumer price index. So the consumer price index just measures the change of retail prices from month to month. And then we have the second one, which is the quantity index price. Index number, sorry, not price. Okay, and then this one, it measures the quantity or how the quantity is changing, whether it is the quantity of goods sold, the quantity of goods consumed, the quantity of 
goods uh, produced. So you're measuring how is this company done from this time period to this time? Has the amount of product they are using gone up? Has it gone down? So it's a measurement of the quantity of um, a given uh, product. Then, not that. Then the third one is the value index number. So this one, we are measuring how the value of something has gone up or gone down. So again, it's in relation to a base period, so maybe a base year, how has the value gone up or gone down? And then the last one is a special purpose. Index number. So this one, we use it when we want to compare the prices of particular items. So uh, maybe you're interested in uh, cigarettes. So it's a special one. It's specific to what it is you want to study. So again, most of the questions that you get will just be list the types or the classes of index numbers that we have and you just say the first one, you have price index numbers, you have quantity index numbers, there are value index numbers, and then we have special purpose index numbers. Then these index numbers have some characteristics. So these are their characteristics. More index numbers. The first is that they are a specialized average. Okay, these are. Okay, so we've talked about several averages over the past uh, couple of lectures. Remember the three point, the five point, and so on. So this is also another type of average. So another thing about index number is that they measure the net change in a group of related variable variables. So they measure. Net change okay. So related maybe that these are all toiletry items that you're talking about. They could be related in that they are used in um, in a factory or in a specific type of factory. So they are related in some way. They could be household go uh, household goods. So things that uh, most people need in their household. Okay. And then the third thing about index numbers is that they measure the effect of changes over a period of time. Measure. Okay, so those are some of the characteristics of index numbers. And now why do we use uh, index numbers or why do we calculate them? Their uses.
Number one, uh, we can use it to measure economic fluctuations. So, uh, measure economic fluctuations. Number two, we can formulate economic policies based on these. So if you know the um, some of these index numbers, then you can formulate better economic policies. So they help in formulating economic policies. and also in planning. Okay, then you can also use these to study trends. You can use them uh, as a forecasting tool. Um, there's a lot of uses actually, but with us, we will focus on working out some of these. And then when you guys are in the industry, you will be using these quite a bit. Now, there are some types of uh, index numbers that we will be calculating. The first is the simple index number, and then the second is the composite index numbers. So we have types of index numbers. First is the simple index numbers. And then we have the composite Okay, so with the simple, we'll be focusing on just one item, and then with the composite, you can look at a basket of goods and then uh, come up with an index number from there. So we start with the simple index. Now with the simple index, we have the price index when we're dealing with prices of a commodity, and we have the quantity index when we're looking at the quantity. Has the amount that we are using gone up or has the amount that we're using gone down? So with the simple index, simple index numbers, we'll look at two. The first one is the simple price index. Okay, so this simple price index again has to do with the price. So you're asking yourself, has the price gone up? Has the price gone down? By how much has the price gone up or down? And then we'll get this information from our uh, simple price index. Now a simple price index, you call it SPI. This is the formula for SPI. We have P1 over P0 multiplied by 100. Here, P1, this is our current price, or our current period price, current period price, and P0, or P0, this is the base period price. Okay, so the base period is uh, what you're comparing all the others to. So base period may be a year, it may be a month. So you could say, okay, I want November to be my base period. And then now we're in December then you will see what is the price 
of the item in December divided by the price in November, and then you multiply by 100, then you can do the same thing for March. You say, what was the price in March divided by the price in November? Because we want to base everything on our price in November. That is our base period. So let's look at a specific example of this. So here we are told that uh, in January 2008, the pump price of petrol in Vintook was 6.87 per litre. Then in January 2009, it cost 7.18. Then in January 2010, uh, it was 7.58. And then January 2011, it was 8.44 per litre. Then using 2008 as the base period, find the simple price indices for petrol in Vintook for each year, okay? So we want to work out the base, um, sorry, the simple price index for each of the years. So we are told that our base year is 2008 so we're finding out how is the price of everything related to 2008 now the way we work this out is not difficult so we can also work out the base the price index of um, 2008 itself so here we say that since 2008 is the base period Then we say that P0 is equal to the price of petrol in 2008, which is 6.87. So that is our P0, it doesn't change. Okay, then we can work out the price index in November and that we do it in the same way is the price of what you're considering divided by the P naught. So here it'll just be 6.87 divided by 6.87 multiplied by um, 100 and we will obviously get 100. So in November, we have P naught over P naught Okay, so this is the current price, but the current price is equal to the base price because we're talking about uh, hey, not November 2008. Okay, so this is the current price and because we are talking about the base here, then we just say the current price is equal to the base price. Then we multiply this by 100. Okay, so this is 6.87 over 6.87, we multiply by 100, and then we will get 100. Okay, and then we move on to the next year. We want the price index Say so this is 2009. Okay, so we'll say the price in 2009 divided by the price in 2008 and then multiply by 100. So this is 7.18 over 6.87 multiplied by 100. And then this gives us 104.5. Five or two decimal places, five one. And then we do the same thing for all the others. Let's look at 2010. So our price index for 2010. This is the price in 2010, 7.58 divided by the price in 2008, so 6.87. Then you multiply this by 100, and I got 110.33.
Then lastly, the price index in 2011. It's the price in 2011, 8.44, divided by the price in the base year, which is 2008, is 6.87. And then you multiply this by 100, and then we get 122.8. Five. Okay, so here uh, you can then make a conclusion based on these uh, price ind indices that you have gotten. So if I look at this one for 2011, uh, it went from 100 to 122 because in 2008 it's 100 and then in 2011 it's 22. That means it has gone up by 22.85 percent okay so we say that the price okay the price index for 2011 is 122.85 this means that the price of a liter of petrol increased by 22.85 percent between 2008 and 2011. That's what it means. And you can also draw the same conclusion uh, between 2008 and 2010. It will say that the price index of 2010 is this number over here, 110.33. Uh, and this means that the price of a liter of petrol increased by 10.33% between 2008 and 20. Uh, 10. So this is just a specific way to summarize what we have done. So I've only looked at 2011, but you can also write a conclusion for 2010 and 29 as well. Okay, so again, this is a very simple formula, nothing too difficult to do there. You just say the current price divided by the base uh, price, then you multiply by 100, and then your conclusion is something like this. So again, you can word it a little bit differently, but what I will want to see is this is the index in that year, and this is how much it has increased between those two years. So I'm saying years, but it can also be months, it can even be days. Okay, then let us the next type of a simple index number is a quantity index. So this one is number two. So this is a quantity index number, but still to do with simple index numbers. Now the formula for this so the simple quantity index, this is given by the current quantity divided by the base quantity multiplied by 100. Okay, so here Q1, this represents the current um, period quantity use so this is the current period quantity okay and then q naught represents the base period quantity Okay, so um, again, the formula is not 
two different. So you want to find out what your simple quantity index is. You say how much are you using now compared to how much you are using in the base year, okay? Or base month or the base day, so on. Okay, so let us look at an example of this. Okay, in 2009, a hardware store sold 143 doors. In 2010, door sales were only one uh, to two units, while in 2011, sale of a door rose to 174. Find the simple quantity index of door sales for each year 2010 and 2012 respectively using 2009 as the base period. Okay, so this one will do it in exactly the same way. We have a formula, so we just use it. So uh, our base period is 2009. So to find out the simple quantity index of 2010, we will say what, how many did we sell in 2010 divided by how many we sold in 2009, and then we multiply by 100. So this is the simple quantity index. So um, 2010 here, how many did we sell in 2010? We have one, two, two. So you say one, two, two. Divide by how many you sold in uh, 2009. So that's one, four, three. Then you multiply by 100. So this you do on your calculator. Somewhere there. Okay, so when I did it, I got 85.31. Okay, so this means that our door sales went down by 14 point something percent between 2009 and uh, 2010. And then can also work out the other one, the simple quantity index for 2011. So how many did we sell in 2011? We sold 174, and then we divide that by the base year. And in the base year, we sold 143. Then we multiply this by 100. OK, so this you do on your calculator, 174 divided by 143 times 100. This is one two one point six eight okay and then you would write a similar conclusion so you can pick 2010 you can say um the simple quantity index of 2010 is 85 point Three, one, and this means that the quantity of doors sold between 2009 and 2010 went down by, let me see, 100. It went down by 14.69%. And then you write a similar conclusion for uh, 2010, because we're always comparing our current to our base, okay? So you will say between 2009 and 2011, it rose by 21.6%, okay? And then uh, we have our composite. Um, index numbers. There are two types of composite index numbers that we look at. The first one is the last year, 
which like I mentioned already, you had to do or work out one such question in the assignment. And then the other type is the PASH um, index number. So working them out again is not uh, difficult. You have a formula of how to do it. So you just apply the formula and then from your formula, you can make some conclusions. So let's look at that. So composite index numbers. Okay, the first is plus P years index number. And this uh, last PS index number is calculated as follows. So this is the sum of the base quantity multiplied by the current price divided by the base quantity multiplied by the base price. Okay, so this is the formula. So I've already uh, indicated what Q0 and P1 mean. So there is Q0, this is the base period quantity. Q1 is the current period quantity. And then P1 and P0, P1, your current period price, and P0 is your base period price. Okay, so another way to think of this last year's um, uh, price index is that this is the current cost of the basket of the base year basket. So let me write this down. So this LPI, this is equal to the current cost of the base year basket divided by the base year cost base year cost of the base year basket Okay, now current cost of base year basket. Base year basket just means how many do you have in your base year? And then you use the prices that you use the current prices. So when we do an example, it'll be easier to understand. So base year basket, if last year you were using five of this, three of this and one of this, you multiply those five, three and one by the price now and then um, base year cost of base year basket how much would it have cost you uh, last year if last year was your uh, base year so let's look at an example okay so the data in the table below shows the usage of a basket of three toiletry items in households in a certain location for 2010 and 2012 respectively. So using 2010 as the base period, we have to find the last year's price index for this basket of toiletries and then B, the PASH price index. So we'll first do the last years, then come back and write the formula for the PASH price index. Okay, so as I was saying, the last P years, we have to divide the current uh, cost of the base year basket. So base year over here, this is 2010. Um, 
base year basket, that means last year we used 37, 24, and 14. How much would that have cost us now? Okay, so we're moving these quantities to the current year, and we use the prices over here. So what we will do is we'll multiply the amount we used in the base year by the amount it costs now. So I'm using then and now, but you should know I'm talking about base year and the current year. Okay, so again, the numerator, current cost of the base year basket. So the base year basket is just how many of the item did we use? And then in for uh, current cost, that is how much it costs in the current year. So if you're using 37 last year, how much would those 37 have cost you now? And so on. So we'll have to multiply because you know if you want to work out the cost of something, when you take your items to the till, let's say you've bought 37 um, bars of soap, each of them costs two dollars ten cents. You just multiply the two dollars ten cents by thirty-seven. Then you add that to twenty-four multiplied by fifteen ninety-five, and then fourteen multiplied by that. Then you add all those together. That will give you how much you have to pay. Okay. So this information will fill it in, uh, will fill it in in this table. So the first one is this one. That is the current. Uh, cost of the base year basket. So we're using last year's quantities and multiplying them by the price of the current year. So I say 37 times 2.1. This is 77.7. .7. So I write that down. And then the next one, uh, the deodorant. Last year I was using 24. How much would those uh, 24 cost me this year? So I will say 24 multiplied by 15.95. This is equal to 382.8. This is 382.8. And then last year, or base year, we're using 14 uh, toothpaste, I don't know, what do we call them? Bars? Rolls? I don't know. Toothpaste, there are 14 of them. And then um, you multiply by how much uh, 14 would cost you now. So that's 14 multiplied by 6.74 and I'm getting 94.36. Okay, then our denominator we said is the base year cost of the base year basket. So how many we were buying last year at last year's prices? So I'll start here with the soap. I was buying 37 bars of soap and this is how much it cost me. So the total will just be 37 multiplied by uh, 1.95. So 37 times 1.95. This is equal to 72.15. 72.15 and then for the deodorant 24 of them multiplied by 14.65 this is 351.6 351.6 and then the toothpaste there's 14 of them and last year, or the base year, it cost 6.29. This is 88.06. Okay, so if we quickly go back to our formula over here, we had to sum up 
all these to get the total price and then we sum up all those in order to get the total price. So that is what we will do over here. So we will sum up these P1, Q0. So we will say 77.7 .7 plus 382.8 plus 94.36. That gives us five it gives us five five four point eight six. Okay, then we do the same thing for this one, which is going to be our denominator, 72.15 plus 351.6 plus 88.06. This gives us 511, 511.81. OK, so now we can work out the last year's price index. And we said this is our numerator, the current value of last year's basket or the base year basket divided by uh, the price of the base year basket. OK, so this L P I. So we say this is the sum of P1 Q0 over the sum of P0 Q0. So this is equal to 554.86 divided by 511.81. So this you work out on your calculator, 554.86 511.81. Okay, I'm getting 1.08. Oh, sorry, I didn't multiply by 100. Times 100. Okay, so you should get 108.4. One. OK, so that is your last year price index. OK, then from there you can make a conclusion. You can say something like this uh, for this basket of toiletry items. has increased by 8.41% from 2010 to 2011, and that's it. So what I will want to see is that it has increased, and tell me by how much it has increased from 2010 to 2011. So you can see again, this is not a very difficult calculation. You just have to keep in mind, what does this um, price index mean? Okay, so we're saying our base year basket, if we were still buying at that quantity, how much would it cost now? 
and then you divide it by how much it cost back then. That is the last year's price index. And then the PASH price index. To the PASH price index. So this is the PASH price index. The formula is uh, given by the sum of Q1. P1, I didn't multiply by 100 here. Uh, Q1, P1 over the sum of Q1, P0. P0, and then again, we multiply by 100. So intuitively, if you think about it, uh, P1 times Q1, that is how many we're using now multiplied by how much it costs now. So it's a current quantity multiplied by the current cost or just the current cost of the current basket. And then Q1 times uh, P0, how much we're using now multiplied by how much it costs in the base year. So here, you can just write that, say the PASH uh, price index. So this is the current cost of the current basket. divided by the base here cost of the base here basket. Okay, so I have another table here for um, the PASH price index, okay? So what we need to work out is uh, P0 multiplied by Q1, then we will add those together, and then P1 times Q1, and then we'll add all those together. And then we will divide the current value over the base value. Okay, so let's start in this column. So P0 multiplied by Q1, so 1.95. Then you multiply it by Q1, which is 40. You get 78. And then for deodorant, 14.65, uh, you multiply it by 18. This is 263.7. And then for toothpaste, um, 6.29, you multiply it by 16. That gives us 100. Point six four. Okay, and then P one Q one. So we're multiplying the current price by the current quantity. So two point one multiplied by forty. That gives us eighty four. And then 15.95, you multiply it by 18. That gives us 287.1. And then um, 6.74, 
multiply that by 16. At 107.84. Just write it better. So it's 107.84. Okay, then over here we're going to sum up all of these. So for the first one, I have 78 plus 263.7 plus 100.64. That gives me 442.34. And then the current value, I have 84 plus 287.1 plus 107.84. This gives me 478.94. Okay, the four can't fit, but you should write it down. Point nine. Okay, my pen won't write there. Point nine four. Okay, now our PASH uh, price index, this is given by the formula we wrote already. Say that this is the sum of Q1 times P1 over sum of Q1 P0, then you multiply this by 100. So what we do is um, this value over here, 478.94, then we divide by P1, uh, Q1 P0, which is 442.34 multiplied by 100. Okay, so working this out, 478.94, 442.34, multiplying by 100, and getting 108.3, yes, that's right. Seven. Okay, then here we can make uh, a similar conclusion. We say overall average price is that of this basket. Okay. Basket of toiletries. You can work this a little bit uh, differently, but what I will want to see is um, that it went up by that much and from 2010 to 2011. And usually your PASH uh, index and the last pair should not be very far apart. So you shouldn't get that one says it went up and then the other one says it went down. And here you can see this is 
and the other one was 8.4 so they should be pretty close okay they don't they most of they will not be exactly the same but they should be saying the same thing and the values should be quite close and then uh, we can also look at the last pierre's quantity index so remember with the simple um index numbers we looked at the simple price index where we we're comparing the prices then uh, we compared the quantities is the quantity going up is it going down then we can do the same thing over here with the last peers uh, and get a quantity index and same thing with a patch quantity index now to see this we look at an example says that the data in the table below refers to a basket of three uh, carpentry items used by a joinery company in the manufacture of cupboards for 2010 and 2011 respectively. So these are the items that they were using, the glue, the boards, the paint. Okay, then we have to construct the last year's quantity index for the average change in the quantity of carpentry materials used between 2010 so 2010 is our base period and 2011 and then we do the same thing we construct the patch quantity index now the formula for these is not too different so the last peers uh yes quantity not price quantity index this is sum p naught q1 over sum of p naught q naught then we multiply by 100 and then the patch quantity index this is the sum p1 q1 over the sum P1, Q0, and then we multiply by 100. Okay, so we want to see as the amount of um, carpentry items they are using gone up, or has it gone down, and what percentage has it gone up or down by? Okay, so when doing this, we simply use our formula. Okay, so the LQI, so again, we say this is the sum of P naught Q1 over the sum of P naught Q0 times 100. So if I look at what I have, the P0 uh, Q1, so P0, I'll multiply it by Q1. So it'll be 13 times 52. And then I will have 63 times 110, 122 multiplied by 20. That is going to be in my numerator. So let me write this down. This is equal to 13 times 52 plus 63 times 110 plus 122 times 20. And then the denominator Q naught times P naught. So I'll say 13 times 45, 63 times 122, 122 times 16. So this is 13 times 45 plus 63 times 122 plus 122 
times 60. So when I work this out, I just typed it in on the calculator as I have it there. So uh, if it's easier for you to work with the tables like I was doing over here, then use that because I know from working this out now when I was making my notes, it's very easy to make a mistake when you're typing in long sums like this. Then you multiply this by 100. So what I got, this is approximately 98.27. Okay, so here we can then make a conclusion that the joinery company used 1.7% less uh, materials on average. from 2010 to 2011. So again, here with the quantity, we're talking about the amount of material that was used. So you can see that this is now less than 100. So to work out this 1.7, I think here I should have left it as 98.3. Okay, 98.3 then. 1.7 makes sense. Okay, so to work out this 1.7, you just say 100 minus 98.3. So that means it went down by 1.7%. So they used 1.7% uh, less material uh, from 2010 to 2011. Then you can also work out the PASH quantity index. So the PASH quantity index the formula again, this is the sum P1 uh, Q1 over the sum P1 Q0, then you multiply this by 100. So if we go back to our table, P1 Q1, so P1 15 times Q1 52, 77 times 110, 125 times 20. So that's our numerator. I have 15 times 52 plus 77 times 110 plus 125 times 20. And this is all divided by, in our denominator we have P1 Q0 so P1 and Q0. So I'll have 45 times 15, 122 times 77, 16 times 125. So 45 times 15 plus 122 times 77 plus 16 times 125. And when I worked this out, I got approximately 97.4. So you can see even the PASH index says that uh, the amount of material went down. So when you're working this out, these indices will differ, but they should be saying the same thing. You shouldn't have one saying it went up and then the other one is saying that it went up. Okay, so we can also make a conclusion on that. So the reason I'm writing both conclusions, even though they're the same, is because you're not always just asked to work out, uh, you're not always asked to work out both of them. Like you saw in the assignment, you were only asked the last P years. You could also just be asked the PASH, so you should also know how to conclude even in that uh, case. So here we say that this means 
that the joinery company used 2.6% less uh, material on average. From 2010 to 2011. Okay, so that is pretty much all you will be asked to do in terms of this price index either a simple in term either a simple price index a simple quantity index the last peers uh, price index last peers a quantity index a pash price index a pash um, quantity index and that's it then one final thing i want us to look at in this chapter is the change of uh, the base of an index series so here uh, for example with this question we had a base which was um 2010 what if we wanted to change the base to 2011 you can do that there's a simple formula for doing that so changing the base of an index series. Okay, so what we do is we will multiply each of um, the terms by an adjustment factor. Now this adjustment factor is very easy to calculate. So our adjustment factor is given by 100 divided by the index in period K. Okay, so period K is the one that you want to make the base year. So let's look at an example of this. It says revise the base period of the price index series shown in the table from 2007 to 2009. So you can see the 100 is over here. That should tell you already that this is our base year. Okay, so or base period rather. Okay, so we want to change the base period from 2007 to 2009. All we need is an adjustment factor. So we'll work out the adjustment factor and then we'll multiply each of these by that adjustment factor. So the adjustment factor, this is equal to 100 divided by the index in period K. Period K is this one over here. So I'll say 100 divided by 125. And 100 divided by 125, this is 0 0.8. So again, what I do is the 78, I multiply by 0 0.8. This one multiply by 0 0.8, this by 0 0.8, and you will see now I will have 100 over here, letting me know that it is now in fact my base period. So when we do that, we have a new table. Here we have the year, and then I'll put the price index over there. Okay, so 2005. We multiply 78 by 0.8. This gives us 62.4. So we have 62.4. And then in 2006, the price index now becomes 78 times. This is 69.6. And in 2007, uh, instead of 100, we say 100 times 0 0.8, this is 80. And then 2008, 
we say 106 multiplied by 0.8. This is equal to 84.8. And then in 2009, we have 125 times 0.8. That gives us the 100, letting us know that it is in fact the base year. And then 2010, we say 138 multiplied by 0.8. This is 110.4. And then 2011, our price index goes from 144 to 115.2 so this is the year and this is the price index okay so now these price indices are in relation to 2009 so you can see it went down by see. okay so uh between 2008-2009, it went up by 15.4%. Because from 2008 to 2009, it increased. And here, between 2009 and 2010, it increased by 10.4%. 2009 and 2011, it increased by 15.2%. Okay, so this is just, again, very simple adjusting your base period. All you have to do is say 100 divided by the price index in uh, that uh, period that you're looking for. Okay, so I will stop there for now. Again, just a reminder, in case you came late, a comprehensive test is on Friday, next week, Friday, 11th of December. 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the basement. If you're not in Vintook, you can write it uh, at any of the NAS centers. The paper will be sent there, I have been told. Okay, so it's fine. You don't have to come to Vintook to write it. You can write at your nearest center. It is a face-to-face -face test. If you are unable to write this um, test, for whatever reason, you can write the supplementary test, which is uh, in February. So you can see the date in the course outline. That is also a face-to-face. -face. So I'm afraid there's no getting away from the face-to-face -face test. But I think what we have done, this course hasn't been very difficult. I saw from test one, the assignment, most of you did uh, quite well. So I'm hoping even in the comprehensive test, you guys will also be able to do equally well. Uh, there were some suggestions that we should have um, a revision class. I proposed Saturday. I'm free the entire Saturday. So whatever time those who want a face-to-face -face class propose, that will be fine. I would like this to be finalized before Friday. So those of you who want to do this, you can email me and then we'll finalize it by Friday and then we But personally for me, I don't see how it will be different because when I'm writing on the board and you can see me and I'm writing here on my on the screen and you can see it, I don't see how that will be different, but maybe it'll help. So why not? Okay, so again, I will stop here. If there are any questions or comments, please uh, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, study for the test.